The nice weather is upon us, guys. You know what that means? Your concealed carry should have good capacity and, well, easily concealed, like the new Smith & Wesson Plus. 13 rounds of awesomeness, oh yeah. Hey everybody, Clint here with Classic Firearms and welcome back to the Classic Firearms YouTube channel where we're bringing you all of the best 2A apparel, guns, ammo when we have it and everything else you could ever ask for. So thanks for tuning in. And what we've got today is a video all about subcompact boys, or actually it's more about this guy right here, the new Smith & Wesson MMP9 Shield Plus. Now what does the plus stand for? From what I've gathered, a little bit of an enhanced trigger, but really what it comes down to are the magazines and the capacity. So the original MMP 2.0, which is this guy right here, which I've been carrying for a while as my uh, concealed carry option. I like it quite a bit. It's a nice gun, but only eight in the magazine and one in the chamber. This guy, it's out there competing with like the SIG P365, the Hellcat, things like that. This guy's got 13 rounds in the magazine, 14 round overall capacity with one in the chamber. And it still maintains a very small size, which is awesome. So in comparison to the original 2.0, now this one does have the laser, the Crimson Trace equipped laser on it, but as you guys can tell, they're pretty much the exact same. Still has a 3.12 inch barrel, easy enough. And you have all of these that come in all sorts of different settings or configurations, I should say. So for instance, this one also has the thumb safety. You can get them with the fiber optic, without the 2.0, you can get with the laser, without the laser, with the fiber optic sights, without the fiber optic saves, with the thumb safety, or without it, it's completely up to you. But I mentioned in the intro to the video here that summertime is upon us and well, it's, it's almost upon us, right? Shorts and t-shirts are coming out. People are gonna be wearing uh, fewer items of clothing and therefore trying to carry your everyday carry might be a little bit more difficult. For me, my Glock 19, which has way too much ridiculous stuff on it, it gets a little difficult to conceal carry when I'm just out wearing shorts and a t-shirt. Granted, I love the 15 round plus one capacity on it. I do love the ability to throw my flashlight laser combo on here in case I need quick acquisition and to identify a target at night. My red dot for, you know, why the heck not? And of course, if you've ever tried shooting with night vision goggles before, you are not gonna be able to pick up your iron sights just doing it out there, right? I really do like my Glock 19. It's one I've had for years. I've put a lot of rounds through it. Obviously, I've had some work done to it, and it's just a good gun overall, but when it comes to concealed carry, I need something a little bit slimmer, something that's not gonna print. What is printing? That, right? Pretty much, I don't need people to see what I'm carrying. Why do I prefer to do that? Well, in a lot of states, you do have the option to conceal carry. Some states are welcoming constitutional carry, or, uh, which is pretty much conceal carrying without a permit, and all of that is great, but if you don't have the tools to do it effectively, you might find yourself in a bad way. So I get myself a decent quality holster, a decent firearm, and I practice. You guys notice in the intro too, something as simple as just pulling up your shirt, grabbing your gun can get, at, get pretty cumbersome. If you're not familiar with what you're wearing before you go out and you just take your gun and holster it and then put it in your waistband, and then all of a sudden you actually have to draw your firearm, but now your sights are getting caught up on a belt loop or something like that. And you realize, oh wow, maybe I should have done a couple of dry fire exercises before I left the house. So let's talk about the new Shield Plus. So it's pretty much everything, the 2.0 that we've got. Uh, so you've got the little bit of a serration right up here. It's not a whole lot, but it's enough to get a decent grip on. I think honestly, with how little there is, it's mainly there for looks, right? But that's okay. Same thing with the original 2.0, no worries. You do have the nice serrations right back here. And of course, we all know Smith & Wesson to be a very quality, reputable brand or manufacturer, still providing firearms to law enforcement. And if you are law enforcement, something like this would probably be a great backup firearm because you still have decent capacity which again, I'm very impressed with 13 rounds in a compact firearm like this is awesome. And so if I do have it in there and it is, it's cleared, right? As far as what's in the chamber and it does have a uh, chamber indicator there for you. So you can actually see the brass if you had one loaded. We are unloaded at the moment, but how I like to carry, and this again is a We The People holster. It's actually for my M 
uh, MMP 2.0, but it fits just fine in the Shield Plus, even without the laser, which I think is pretty cool. You just tighten down the screw on this guy here and that'll tension it up for you if you need it. Anyway, just like that right there, and as you can see, there's a little bit of play, but if I tighten that down, it's not gonna be bad. So again, for a holster that's not even designed for this gun, <laughs> I'm okay with it. All right, but anyway, typically what I like to do, it's that right there. Now, a lot of people have an issue with inside the waistband appendix carry because, well, you're kind of breaking one of the rules, which is don't point at anything you don't want to shoot or destroy. Well, for me, you know, hopefully it just goes straight that way, right? And away from me if a negligent discharge were to ever happen. But this right here for me is, again, the most comfortable way for me to carry. Typically, I'll wear a little bit thinner belt so that way it doesn't, you know, it's not as thick and you know, pushing the gun further away from my body, or excuse me, pushing it further into my body. But uh, anyway, this feels good to me. And then typically what I like to do before I leave the house, something as simple as that. You notice right there, boom. Oh, yep, I didn't pull my shirt far away enough. I got caught on my sights. That could be a problem if I'm trying to draw in a high stress situation. Again, pull my shirt up higher, I can get a little bit better, tight. Up here and I'm there. And you need to be able to do that without looking down at your gun either. Keep your eye on the ball, right? That type of setup. So anyway, getting out there and practicing with your gun is a big thing. Now let's go actually shoot this guy, talking about practicing with it. Let's see how this trigger feels, the reset on it. And I've got the tree up here. I'm not really doing that for any type of speed or anything, but just shooting still targets is always fun. But when it's just your little body targets, your ip you know, it's fine, it's easy, but let's get something a little bit more challenging here. So let's go ahead and load this guy up. Let's take our first couple of shots with it, other than what you saw in the intro, and let's just actually focus on that trigger and see how it feels here. Not bad. So the trigger doesn't have the best reset in my mind. I know on Smith & Wesson's website, they say it has a very noticeable and audible reset. Meh. Kind of like their 2.0. It's good enough for an everyday carry type of setup, uh, but maybe maybe polishing it up a little bit. Maybe there's some aftermarket stuff out there, but just right out the box and how it comes feels pretty good. Not bad. Feels very good. You'll notice too, the magazine has a nice bright orange follower. So that way, you know, whenever you do your chamber check there, yep, I am definitely out. There's not a jam or anything. It's nice, bright, and it lets me know that. Great. Magazine drops freely. That is awesome. Obviously, last round bolt hold open. And something I like about the Smith & Wesson MMPs is where they place their slide release. For me, I don't have an issue riding my thumb on it. Again, everybody's built differently, right? But for me personally, I'm not using that to ride my thumb on it. And then when that last round goes, uh, it doesn't lock back. That's something I have to continually practice with with my Glock. You'll notice I've got an empty mag in there, right? Last round bolt hold open or the slide locks back in the last, last round. What I typically do though is notice where the placement is and yes, me trying to be cool back in the day. I was like, oh, I need that extended slide release, right? Well, I've come to find out, mm, no, I don't because that's too easy to actuate as it is. Naturally, where I want to put my thumb is resting right on there. What does that mean when I'm shooting and that last round shot? Yep, not locking back. The moment I place my thumb on my knuckle over here and off that, locks back, right? Things to keep in mind with and why you should be out there practicing and why dry firing is actually a good exercise for you. Because get out there, you simulate everything you're doing with the firearm. So I know I'm coming up for the draw, I'm coming in, click, cool. Yep, everything's working as it should, and then reset. There you go, let's go ahead and show that off for you guys really quick, since I've talked about it. And you'll notice it is a nice, decent, flat facing trigger, which feels great. And let's just go ahead and apply a little bit of pressure, you'll see. There we go, just a little bit of take up, a little bit of travel, and then you hear the striker fall, and there's your reset. So you notice it's not exactly the smoothest or cleanest reset, but that's okay. Again, for a everyday carry type of firearm, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Compare that to the 2.0, which has a little bit different style of safety on the trigger. You'll notice that you've got kind of that blade safety that's become very, very popular, and it's more of a flat blade. It's not like a, just a, thin piece of metal in there. But on this guy here, you've got a different style of safety. You'll notice there's that latch right back here. And if you don't apply pressure here, that latch won't move. So if you try pulling the trigger from up here, it's not gonna happen. So you do have to make sure you have proper trigger placement on your finger. Again, we are clear. And let's pull that back here. 
not bad and decent you hear that that reset wasn't all that audible but again it's good enough and let's go ahead and actually just run a couple of rounds to this guy here just to see how it feels now this one too being the single stack version only eight round capacity and you got to see just how thin that is and when we after i'm done shooting this we'll go compare that to the shield plus and to show you guys i'm actually very impressed with what smith and wesson smith and wesson did if i could speak because it's actually not much thicker here in the grip even though it's a double stack mag and giving me a few extra rounds it's pretty sweet if you ask me let's take a couple of shots nice feels good getting again mag dropping free and it feels nice all right so not bad feels good feels just about the same as the plus here and just so you guys can get an idea of just for a double stack versus single stack go ahead and take a look at those without pointing them at my face let's go ahead and show that off there as you'll see the grip is maybe you might be able to notice it to the eye I, I can't tell from your perspective obviously but this guy feels just a little bit thicker obviously it is a double stack with a 13 round magazine capacity pretty cool right now something that i do think is neat that smith and wesson does is they do include two magazines for a lot of their firearms or most of them so it does also come if you're trying to maintain that maximum concealability it does come with that flush fitting mag and something i've already grown to like about it is even though it's flush fitting, I'm not getting that pinky overhand, overhang that I typically get with a lot of compact firearms. It's close, don't get me wrong, it's close. And maybe with a little bit of an uppercut or undercut, uppercut, right? Maybe with a little bit of an undercut here, that would help some to get me a little bit higher grip on the gun. But ultimately it feels fine. Let's go ahead and take a couple shots with the flush fitting mag. What is it, 10 rounds? 10 rounds of this guy here, let's see how we do. There we go. Oh, something I've noticed too is I gotta aim a little bit low. I don't know if that's for me and the getting used to that trigger or what, but I just gotta aim just a little low to make sure I'm hitting that target. Again, magazine on this guy's dropping free, feels good. We've got the last, last round slide hold open that's working just fine. And again, that nice bright orange follower. So the new Smith & Wesson MMP9 Shield Plus if it's one thing that I like to harp on when it comes to an everyday carry gun or a concealed carry gun is capacity. Capacity is a big deal. Not because I'm just gonna say you're gonna miss your target, but what you're pretty much taught, what you're trained to do is to make sure that the threat is down, right? If you find yourself in a life or death situation, you wanna make sure that you can take care of yourself and those around you and be able to get out without you know, still being in harm at the end of the day or at the end of the situation. So having that 13 round capacity in one magazine with one extra in the chamber, so a 14 round capacity overall, 10 plus one on the flush fitting magazine, I feel really good about. So definitely a fan of that capacity is a big deal. And don't let anybody try to tell you how many rounds you need to defend your life with. That's not their decision. Anyway, leaving it at that, one last thing I wanna talk about guys is our current giveaway. In fact, let me just go show it to you. All right, and I, I got it. <laughs> so if you didn't see our video announcing the SCAR 17 with the Trigicon VCOG, with the Tango Down Vertical Grip as our next giveaway, you might wanna go check it out. We teamed up with Braden Price and uh, well, we blew up his old ATV. And I see a lot of you guys in the comments of that video really upset that we just decided to blow up that ATV. Why didn't we give it to somebody? Well, that's because it was Braden's ATV and he wanted to blow it up, so there it is. Also, it wasn't running and it didn't work and he didn't feel like sinking any more money into it, so why not blow it up? That sounds good to me. Anyway, you're getting an FN SCAR chambered in 762 NATO, also some guard dog body armor, so you gotta be happy with that, right? If you're getting the plate carrier, getting the plates, you're getting the helmet, getting everything you need to be taken care of in case the zombies come, all right? So you're all taken care of. Also, too, this little piece of pretty metal here is... Uh, a piece of the one of the wheel spacers that was blown off of the ATV. Braden Price's signature on it there, so make sure you guys are headed on over to his channel to check out his video too. We both film different videos and both are pretty entertaining, I think. And also too, if you go like his video, once it gets up to 100,000 likes, we're pretty much pushing the button, the go button 
I'm blowing up, blowing up something else, but this time 500 pounds because 100 pounds just wasn't enough. So make sure you're telling all your friends and family about his video. Check out our video. Get your entries in at classicfirearms.com. Don't forget all the different ways to get your entry methods. Don't miss out. God bless you guys. We'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com.